Kind of has to wait for it. The Zed looks for an all-in with your Ignite to try and get an early kill on the Corky when the jungler comes. Bottom side is just continuing to be this double lift and core JJ. Skill shot Palooza as it's prowling projectile into boomerang blade over and over and over again. Vulcan and Cody Sun will have to try to dodge these, but man, it is hard. It is a one-sided party so far. And it is literally just core JJ and double lift throwing everything they have at Cody Sun under this turret. It's also denied a decent amount of C, uh, CS to that turret. So they're getting rewards beyond the health bars that they're chunking down. Speaking of getting chunked, Demonte continuing to eat that damage from the Phosphorus Bomb and the auto attacks coming out of Jensen's Corky. Again, Corky sort of just making his way into the meta along with the Azir, these two big scaling mid laners kind of just becoming the mark of what you have to deal with in the current iteration of the meta as the junglers will both be on the Scuttle Crabs now, which is Minty on the top side, bottom side occupied by Lyra. See if that vision plays much of a difference here, or if Lyra decides to make something happen in the mid lane. And Lyra did, about 30 seconds ago, proc that Scryer's Bloom. Uh, you saw it on your mini-map, Scryer's Bloom. Uh, it actually just shot up from the bottom side. Now he's going for the gank, actually, on bottom side. Finding, find the plan, a double lift. Good block comes out from Core JJ, though leaves double it from the attached to block the stun. Speaking of stuns, it's top side, Xfinity locking down Hooney. All right, out the flash. bunch of summoner spells blown. Both teams have to keep track of these. Top side been focused by uh, Team Liquid, and they did get Hoonies. But also on the bottom side, Cody Sun aggressively flashed there uh, with the Lucian, and that can be punished as well. So both top and bottom are possible areas for Xfinity. Here we go, though, another binding hits. More bindings, more damage. Cody Sun and Vulcan feeling more comfortable in this lane now after the assistance they got from the gang, putting Double Lift and Core JJ on the back foot. Yumi never has a flash to begin with, and now the Double Lift has spent his. Team Liquid has to be really mindful of their positioning in this bottom lane. Definitely true, especially considering early ward investment by the side of Clutch Gaming on the bottom end of the map. They've got Control Ward plus Scuttle Crab plus the Tri Ward Brush there. Uh, gonna keep their aggressive pushing bottom side well informed. Actually, Xfinity just passes over it, goes back to backtrack and take out that control ward. And you can see the question mark came down there from Clutch Gaming as they're saying, all right, he's clearing that one out, so we aren't gonna have any vision going forward on where this guy is at. Level four on both junglers still. And here's where you look for possible all-ins in Zed matchups. Demonte is about to hit level six, has gotten his first recall off to get the Serrated Dirk. You need that lethality for when you go for your all-in with your level uh, six death mark. As soon as you can get that, you get a jungle gank. This is where kills can actually come through because if a good Zed will be able to save it uh, for the flash and still be able to follow their lane opponent. All they need is a little help from the jungler to start it off. And Smithy passing over a ward might allow Clutch to get into position. Looks like they'll be too much just yet. Xfinity moves in, drops the control ward at the enemy blue buff. Vulcan walking over, he's gonna see where he was, but Xfinity will take the blast cone out, also denying that from future gank pass that may come in from Lyra. Double lift for 4JJ once again, setting up shop below this tier one turret. Pretty easy for them to work on some play money down here, but Lyra and Demonte are in the bottom half of the river. The point is not yet capturable. It does have a delay between captures on when you can go for it again. Lyra is gonna wait that out and back on top of it. To make sure he captures that away, keeps away from Xfinity. Back in this bottom lane, it's business as usual. He's running past the ward. Lyra wants to make it happen. Over the control ward he goes, but Vulcan is low HP on this one. Double lift and core JJ. Still no flash on double lift. Exhaust available for core JJ, but that is it. Prowling projectile fired off, and Team Liquid has an easy time disengaging. Yeah, they're able to kite long enough, and with no deep vision onto Xmithy, the Skarner, the counter gank there would be devastating. So good yep. call by Clutch Gaming not to force that too hard even though they had a ward in the side brush to try and see that uh, and go all in on double lift. They had no intelligence as to where Xmithy was and a possible roam from Jensen would be devastating. And as we've been focusing a lot on the bottom half of the map here early on, I want to turn attention towards the top side real quick to comment on the Karma because this is a champion that we see have some different build paths and different opportunities depending on the game. Sometimes it's really poke heavy, sometimes it's more of a supportive role. But with the Chalice on impact, we will see more of that supportive role, at least at the start of the build during the early and mid game from this champion. And honestly, when you've got a Corky and a Sivir to do the damage, I like this. Yeah. And they also talked the, in the last game about the Karma with the Athene. Magic resist early on from your Chalice feels quite nice. Turney so far has been pushing 
doing a very good job on that rumble because they've gotten multiple sightings of Xmithy earlier. Now they have no idea that he is uh, on the dragon. Pushing bottom lane should secure it for Team Liquid. Velvet and Gorge AJ have retained control of this lane so effectively that it does earn you pretty free objectives. As far as the Ocean Drake being picked up, Smithy should be able to finish it. Here comes Silas, though. Can Lyra get in there? Lyra's making his way towards oh, the he, he goes after it, but he's not able to secure it. He does grab the ultimate from Xmithy. TP's coming in now from both sides. Lyra looking to maybe make a grab if he can do it. Remember, Xmithy's not even level six. The real Skarner ultimate is not available. Only the clone is there. Double pop the spell shield, getting himself away. Summoner spell is going to be used here by Team Lincoln. Just engage a little bit. The heal coming out from 4JJ just to make sure they all got away in time. And nothing else comes of that except for that Drake. But now Impact may be in some trouble here in the mid lane. Ignite I plus the Shuriken. He'll burn away. And first blood goes to Demonte. Kill for Demonte on the Assassin mid lane. It's not on his lane opponent, but he'll take it. Takes down the top laner here. Impact using both summoner spells in that fight. Teleported down to answer it. Vulcan here is still on mid, trying to make a pass at Jensen. Really hard to do much of anything while the Valkyrie is up, though. Of course, you can very easily get away from any sort of skill shot you might fire after him. And Jensen is just going to move up in the 1v2 against these guys. Let's see how it looks now that Hooney makes his way into the mix with Xmithy here, though, and that ultimate now armed and ready. Clutch Gaming decided to back away. All right, that was a much-needed kill for Clutch Gaming uh, because they just expended everything getting down to this dragon after Team Liquid had already taken the dragon. Here's another look at how it happened. Impact was trying to clear that ward. Flash in from Demonte. Able to land the death mark. Both Q's hits. Ignite goes on at the end to secure it as well. And you can see the shuriken above Impact's head. For those that may have forgotten, because it's been a while since we've seen Zed, <laughs> shuriken above your head means you die as soon as it pops. But Impact shielded himself yeah. at the end to try to bait out the, oh, I think I've got the kill. I'll go for the fadeaway. Cool guys don't look at explosions. Unfortunately, Demonte was ready to throw everything down to secure uh -huh. it. Ignite finishes him off. He outplays the mental outplay and earns himself that first kill. You can see has the ingredients for the first lethality item in inventory here. And you can't really go wrong with lethality stackers by just throwing in extra long swords whenever you can afford them. You're gonna need 14 of them or something to finish your build, so easy choice. And there's a fairly low cooldown on Deathmark early on, even for Zed, so he should continue to look to attack members of Team Liquid that do not have flashes. Currently, that is only Impact and technically 4JJ, but Yumi's don't really count there. Nah, Take nah. a look at this wraparound gank from Lyra. Silas slipping into the brush here. They want to attack Impact with no flash still. Will they go for a possible dive, though? That seems a bit risky against the Karma. With a lot of uh, shielding, it can get very frustrating. Uh, and as you point out as well, the stopwatches are all online. Makes it very difficult to pull off that kind of a dive. But Lyra is waiting in oh! the so patiently. Waits for him all the way, finds the chain. Looking for the chain CC follow up. There comes your rumble ulti over the wall. Hooney's not there in time, but he's gonna go all the way in. The flash oh, makes it all, but there's the stopwatch. You cannot underestimate it. It's a one for one, almost a one for two. Captain Flowers, I feel like I know this very well because you give me the PSA every single game. Yeah. Always check your opponent's inventory for active stopwatches and Clutch Gaming, go for the dive. As you pointed out, boom, it is a, uh, there to save Karma. So Impact survives long enough to get a counter kill in a 2v1. That means bottom side of the map is very, very open for Team Liquid to push ahead and they get the tower. The first month after those runes came out, I feel like I ended <laughs> every other game to a stopwatch that I forgot existed. It has been burned into my mind as something you must keep track of. The bottom side, Team Liquid getting that first turret money, getting all the plates associated with it. They're 2,000 gold ahead here against Clutch Gaming. Jensen will continue pushing up here in mid lane. We'll see if Vulcan can come around to make some sort of a pass. But with Impact showing up behind, 2v2 CG doesn't win. All right, Jensen, been firing away, gets one of the turf lanes off of that mid turret. They're actually swapping lanes as well. As you see, Double S was able to teleport in with the unit attached to get a 2 one on that. Here's Impact walking in to face check. Clear up. is going to be able to get away because there's a big heal there that will stack up uh, the tether for Karma, has the shield able to shield and bait Hooney further under the tower. You see how long Impact waited to actually activate his trap card uh, until Hooney's very deep under the tower, ensuring his death. In the end, Lyra does go for the kill to at least get the one for one for Clutch, but he also has to flash out. 
Greed is a deadly sin and patience is a virtue. Means Team Liquid makes it one for one on a play that looked like it would otherwise favor CG. And now we're on to the Shelly games. One and a half minutes left before the plates go down. Means if either team wants to get the extra benefit from that, they'll have to secure the Rift Herald early and then drop it rather quickly afterwards too. Garner Spire secured by the side of Clutch Gaming means it's going to feel significantly weaker around this objective until they can recapture that. Clutch Gaming has a lot of bodies around this point, and they do not want to concede that objective to TL, but Team Liquid says, all right, whatever, we'll just go for the turret directly. Mm -hmm. Double lift and core JJ. Big strengths here for Team Liquid. They dominated the bottom half of the map for the first 13 minutes after teleporting up top. Team Liquid trying to move their power around here. All of Clutch grouped up in the tri brush on that controller, kind of waiting for a play here. Let's see if they go for it inside the Rift Herald pit. Both junglers also have a Skarner all ready to go. If anybody's out of position, <laughs> they will quickly find themselves captured and bursted down. Shelly getting impatient, running away. All right, back home. Shelly's just playing ring around the roads here, and everybody's just trying to wait for her to despawn, I think. Or at least wait for the plates to despawn so you can get the most value out of her, I should say. Meanwhile, on the bottom half of the map, Impact has been able to push all the way into the turret, so that does occupy Huni for now, and his te uh, teleport is ready. Huni's got a couple more seconds on his, but Team Liquid have a few seconds of desync teleport timers. They're trying to force the Rift out on it. Here come the teleports. TP from Clutch Gaming means Team Liquid has to head away from this one. Shelly's gonna stay aggro. We'll see if Clutch Gamer able to secure the Rift Herald instead. We just get a leash from Team Liquid on this one, but TL's not willing to walk away from it. It's gonna turn into a full on team fight. Equalizer comes down. Double is gonna be eating a little bit of damage, having to flash away now. Xfinity in danger. Goes into the stopwatch, keeping himself alive, having to continue to disengage Ooh. now as Lyra comes right back into the mix, but he's gonna be killed. Double with the damage, and Lyra goes in alone and falls. The Skarner gets the last lap there. Lyra wanted to be a hero, goes in to finish off the low health member, but immediately activates the Skarner ultimate, and that will be Team Liquid, then rotating the mid lane here to finish up this turret. Jensen been able to farm up his full pretty force, and along with Double Lift at his side, they will melt it. Well, Clutch Gaming got the ability to maybe take a turret with the Rift Herald, but in response, they traded away a kill and the ability to definitely take a turret in the fact that Team Liquid took a turret. Man. So, wouldn't exactly say that one went in their favor overall, but DeMonte is patiently waiting in this brush up here in top lane to see if maybe he can get a kill. Yeah, I feel like you'd always have, uh, you'd always take a turret now over a Rift Herald for later. Meanwhile, DeMonte on the top side, able to push in impact on the Zed. He's level 10. Still has uh, the extra gold advantage with that one kill. Ghost Blade completed now, so some more mobility for this assassin, but not a lot of super viable targets. Bottom side, they are gonna try and trade here for the Cloud Drake. Predator activated from McSmithy, but he's outnumbered, so that would be a risky move. Outnumbered and no ultimate means the Skarner pack is severely lower compared to what it normally is. But Xmithy just walks right into the Drake pit. It's gonna be slain by Clutch Gaming regardless. Skarner has to flash over the wall to keep himself alive. And the shutdown on the Devil it goes to DeMonte. Clutch Gaming with a big win in that one. Yeah, that was a little bit scattered here. Now they're continuing with an invade. They find Jensen. They are not done yet. Jensen disengaging there. Core JJ Ulti gonna be helping out with that when Shelly summoned up here in the mid lane. Equalizer used to dissuade Team Liquid from moving in in time. Shelly's gonna continue putting auto attacks into that one. And with five members from Clutch Gaming, they'll try to secure the rest. But a couple more auto attacks should do the trick. And there you go, Clutch Gaming on the board for objective. That was pretty big for DeMonte. You get another kill here on the Zed. He'll be able to get another serrated Dirk item, funding his lethality armory. Let's take a look here. Double F walked over the ward, so you see on your screen, DeMonte just goes right for him. One combo from the Zed. He had no flash, so he was completely dead. Also, at the same time, Lyra had a very nice spike steal on the actual objective. So even though Team Liquid had to teleport in from Jensen, who has package and the Yumi, you know, a very powerful uh, transition for him over to the bottom half of the map. Uh, Clutch Gaming play really well around that power, and the package really doesn't earn Team Liquid anything. Clutch Gaming definitely needed that 
Yeah, small victory because Team Liquid currently ahead and scaling very nicely with their Corky and their Sivir. And Clutch Gaming isn't one of these teams that typically bleeds out a ton in the early game either. Last week, I believe, was the first time they had actually lost a turret three fifteen minutes. And in this game, they've already lost two. That third one taken down now by Jensen. So Team Liquid showing exactly what the difference between going up against them and going up against some of the other competition in the LCS looks like. Clutch Gaming's really going to need to step it up. And this does also answer the question that some people have been having about why has the meta developed into the Corky and Azir's in mid lane? Because those are the best damage scaling mid lane champions for your team fights. Corky uh, now past the Trinity Force, once you start to get a couple more items on it, the damage output from the Corky and the Sivir is going to be amazing during the team fights for Team Liquid. And then they have a bunch of support champions around those two hard carries. Yeah. Xmithy in the front line tank, and then two shielders from Impact and for JJ. Impact showing no signs of working towards a more AP focused Typical solo laner build, instead just wants to continue supporting those two big carries. Ardent Sensor completed now. You can apply that to everybody on the team with a mantra inspire if you want to. Also having that Athenes we already mentioned earlier means mana and extra shields are gonna be easy things for him to manage. As over the wall goes Vulcan with the flash, Smithy gonna be caught out here. And that is one dead Scorpion. Lyra makes sure it happens. That's kill number four for Clutch. Big play there from Vulcan, uses his flash to get the kill. What can they get on the map for it though? Yeah. Bottom turret is probably the best target as there's a minion wave fairly close. Booty does head down there, but nobody else from Clutch comes, so I don't know uh, you know, how successfully he'll be able to finish it off. It looks like Impact is thinking about sticking around and offending here with Karma. So Clutch Gaming might not get an objective, even though they expend the flash to, to get that pick. Um, they definitely need to utilize the time where they have power play options. Right, I mean, that's Vulcan's flash. That's a huge part of your ability to initiate on a team that honestly doesn't have a lot of initiation mechanisms. You look at your AD carry, mid lane, and solo lane positions, there's no engage there. Yeah, you've got the ability to steal an ulti with the Silas and go in with something like a Skarner ult, but you really need those flash bindings. And spending that to not get anything aside from the 300 gold on Skarner's head, not the best outcome here for Clutch Gaming. At least it is that kill that keeps them eh, a little bit further ahead, but still plenty of work to do here up against Team Liquid as Xfinity farms up. We're almost to the point of the game where Baron is relevant, which means we will see the teams focusing around this top half of the river here soon. And it was actually very important that Clutch Gaming try and get a turret off of that kill because they're the team that really does need to take down the Team Liquid defenses to force them into scattered formations so that Demonte can actually make use of the assassin here. You know, Zed wants 1v1 to the side lane. Zed does not want a team fight versus a team that has AoE shields and a Skarner that's looking to sting him. Uh, so it's very, very important, even more so than normal compositions for Clutch to actually get these two last standing outer turrets down. Top and bottom are actually still fairly healthy for Team Liquid. Uh, so Team Liquid's game plan is actually going quite well for themselves as they've got two items already on double lift, one and a half there for Jensen, almost about to complete that infinity edge. Going straight for the damage options now as Clutch Gaming gonna find themselves getting engaged on, but Xfinity quickly having a flash out defensively. He's in some trouble, Devontae goes after him, but he's a little bit too late. The Shield doing exactly what they do to shut down Zed's plan. Jensen grabs a kill on the back end of the fight, and Team Liquid come out on top. Jensen goes in with a package there. He's able to touch him with the end and get off the auto. Now it's Team Liquid with their power play. 5v4 headed on mid lane. Clutch trying to get in defensive position. Clutch Gaming, they managed to get two people up there near that tier two turret. The other two are gonna be stuck in the jungle, and that means Team Liquid take down turret number four. And now there is a Cloud Drake they can retreat to. Try and even up the move speed bonuses here. Smithy goes straight for it. He's gonna start it up while the rest of the team holds off Hoonie. Or needs the flash. Yeah, no flash on your rumble means less kill potential when you go towards those backline members that might survive with just a little bit of HP. And that last fight showed us just how good this Team Liquid composition is at being deceptively tanky. It earns them the mid lane turret, it earns them their kill, and it earns them this Cloud Drake on top of it. Let's take another look at how it went down. All right. Xmithy goes in on Skarner, looking for the all-in. You talked about the Yumi speed boost, but nice finding from Vulcan initially stops the initiation. And then all the shields there save Xmithy. So Demonte goes back in 
try and finish the job. He ulted double lift there on the Sivir, but it was such a big answer. Double lift got off the boomerang blade, huge chunk, as well as the auto from Jensen with Trinity Force proc, allowing him to go all in onto the assassin. He uses the package there to get in position, uh, slows him and tags him with the edge, plus the extra auto to finish off the counter kill. Meanwhile, Team Liquid's double supports of Impact and Core JJ keep it Smithy alive. Demonte is going to be found out here in this top half of the river with Smithy nearby. Demonte knows he can't try any sort of a fancy outplay as soon as you even go towards anyone at all. Man, so run away though. You could do, yeah, you could throw your arms behind you and Naruto run straight to Area 51 instead of top lane because you're not going to make anything happen up here. <laughs> Meanwhile, double lift back to mid lane here. Simmer trying to wave clear as usual. Which honestly isn't too hard when you're flowers doing a half hat. item Simmer. The secret to winning here against Clutch Gaming for Team Liquid is just clear out all the minions, scale up, waiting for that late game, and it's working out pretty well for him. I mean, honestly, Clutch Gaming have been ahead and killed the entirety of this match, but Team Liquid has always been in command of the gold. The gold draft just likely looking like a steep cliff uh, at this point. Well. I guess more of a gradual incline, more of a hill, you know, a hike, maybe, I guess we'll call it. But Clutch Gaming have got to find some sort of a way to make these plays happen. But as I already said earlier, the engage tools are so limited for this squad. When they're not ahead, things feel kind of like they're out of their course. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to, to use some sneaky tactics here, hiding in the brush, looking for lone members of Team Liquid separated from the pack but they haven't been able to take advantage. Even with all these control words and defensive placement, that's the right idea, you know, that's the setup. And Demonte was up there on the top side looking again for a possible opening on Jensen. Isn't able to find it in time though, and now Team Liquid starts to do the dirty work. They're clearing out all these control words. Xmithy goes in! Xmithy trying to find that ult. He was not able to make it happen in time. I believe you heard the voice, but he wasn't able to get the pull. Now he's got it anyway. There goes Hootie! He's taken down. Devil grabs the kill money, and now Clutch Gaming are on the run. Will they grab anybody else? The Yumi ulti wants to find one, but it just can't quite get that third hit. Team Liquid's going to chase them all away. They grab the flash out of both the enemy jungler and AD carry. We'll see what else they want to decide to go for now. Still five men strong. They've got priority over this top half of the jungle. Impact leading the charge. The Yumi bouncing around between whichever member is most pertinent. Cody's son going to be in some trouble now. Roof finding its way down, and he is blown up. With the AD carry out of the picture, things just keep coming up Team Liquid, and the push keeps going. Hey, you thought Yumi was scary when attached to Double Lift. That was Yumi attached to Impact. The double support squad takes down the enemy AD carry. Now they're trying to fend for themselves in the jungle. Demonte's lying in wait here, but Team Liquid won't take the bait. They go for the objective. They pushed in the top lane. Jensen's already on the inhibitor turret up there. He dealt with the outer one already. That leaves the mid window right open. No reason to run around on a nature walk through the jungle when you can just knock on the front door of the base here. Mid lane tier three turret nearly eliminated. Top lane turret taking a little bit of damage here from Jensen as well. Clutch Gaming finally with five bodies alive on their own side again are able to repel Team Liquid, but this was a serious bonus for how far ahead Team Liquid was earlier compared to now. They made a lot of headway. All right, Samante doing the dangerous job of heading into the jungle to try and clear out all their vision. One of the benefits of going with the full lethality build, get some easy ward clearing. That's the number one priority here for Clutch. They're trying to keep some sort of vision around Baron because they know it's, this may be their last hope. If Team Liquid comes knocking on that door, fully decked out in purple, you're done. You know, lined up with five people, you are done. There's no way you can get in the middle and try and assassinate through all these defenses. So it has to be in one of these more scattered formations, trying to take advantage of someone out of line. Team Liquid has done a good job so far of not allowing those sorts of errors. Remember, although Team Liquid are at the top of the table, currently number one, they are a back-to-back-to-back -back -back champions, they have some issues during regular season play of losing games randomly that you cannot think of them to lose. They don't have that invincibility factor that top teams often do. Oh, we're going to... <laughs> it's just Tony, so he's I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to do any kind of an ambush down here. I don't think Assassin Rumble is going to make too many moves on to Corky here. Especially not with the package. No. That's basically a free escape. 
Yeah. Or a free turnaround and assassinate the Rumble. I mean, you just drop the bomb right on him. I mean, Hootie's right here. Ah, you, lo you lose faith in the Assassin Rumble. Oh, well, Assassin Rumble's coming around from behind. Equalizer gets dropped down. Jets and the rest of Team Liquid in retreat. Hootie's going to be taken low. He gets popped. Demonte moves forward. That's what I'm talking about. You do not assassinate when Skarner is right there. Focus run down next. Double kill, double lift. Clear is going to be out of the picture here soon. Jensen goes on a killing spree. And Team Liquid get four for nothing. Yep, they're coming to knock it. And the door is wide open. Bottom lane will go down. Team Liquid looking to end it. No reason to even knock. Just kick the sucker down and keep on marching. Nexus turrets, the next target here for TL. What are you gonna do when you're Cody's son? Double have said he was looking to see more out of him. He's not gonna see it today. The Nexus already about to fall 28 minutes into this game. Team Liquid showcasing why they're number one. Clutch gaming gonna drop here. They'll run out of the fountain, but is there really a whole lot you can do? Team Liquid seem to be just hanging around to pad the numbers here a little bit more. Cody Sun falls. Demonte is gonna be going into the stasis. Hooney goes down next. Rampage over to Jensen. And the minions say enough of this. Nexus goes home. Clutch gaming goes home. Team Liquid grabs a win. 10 and 3 now for Team Liquid. The three time defending champions have turned it on after the first couple losses early on in summer, kind of finding their way and making adjustments, trying to learn from MSI. They have dialed right back into the tried and true strategies, scaling backline damage from mid and bottom, supported by multiple champions and a front line in there, leads to a very, very secure victory for the squad. And from the beginning of Champion Select, I was curious how this game was going to play out because we got to see the three champions in the Lux and the Karma and the Yumi that are all so often banned. And when Team Liquid gets to have two out of three of those and just say, nope, you are dedicated, Jensen and Double F hand-holding, you are making sure they are comfy, they've got a mint on their pillow when they wake up in the morning, and they can carry however they please, <laughs> that's what you get, and that's the kind of carry performance I want to see. Mints every single morning. Every Gotta morning. Gotta keep them happy. All fine. Honestly, I have a lot of respect for the style that Clutch are going for, right? That's why at the beginning we were talking about, I hope that they continue to try this style, to continue to try and push it early to see if they can find openings in other ways. Well, they found the openings that got them the win, in this game and for, well, Liquid did, I should say. Clutch Gaming still got a little bit more to work on, but for more on how Team Liquid secured the win here for themselves, we're gonna send things back over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. Before we get into it, we gotta welcome Broken Blade to the desk to help us break this one down. Normally, we would jump right into, you know, the macro strategy of the team comps, how did this team win, or what did this team do improperly. I wanna start by just looking at an awesome play. Core JJ. There is a reason why we continue to talk about this guy from MVP of last split. It's a playmaker of this one. Down in the bot lane, saving his AD carry with a heads up play. This is so insane, like how quick of a reaction it is. He doesn't see Mira coming down here. He goes to protect, and then mid air, after it's already coming to him, he disjoints it by hopping off and collecting it so double lift has time to flash out. Otherwise, he's CC'd up and killed right away. So yep. that is the difference between our, my bot lane dying and maybe losing their lead, and like, we're okay, we can stabilize that was insane i mean it is it's, it's it's incredible to see that kind of mechanical heads up play and i think it results in exactly this right the ability of double lift and core jj to outplay certain moments is what makes them so scary as a bot lane and ultimately build leads like this yeah i think uh, they definitely had the better bot lane draft for tr and just absorbing this kind of pressure is really really insane because this is they made a play topside and Rumble got behind off that play because Sars was making play bot, but TL ball lane absorbed the pressure and we, they got a lead on top side, which was really insane for TL's ball lane. And, and I'm sure you can speak to this, just they having played against uh, TL a number of times at this point. It makes it so difficult then to develop an attack strategy for this team because you assume a certain level of execution from each of their players just by virtue of being good individually at the game. And so then, how do you put them on a composition that, you know, that their mechanics and abilities can't cover for? Uh, let alone the fact that they end up on Yumi Sivir of all things, so you didn't even put them on a poor bot lane duo. What's going on with that? I don't know. It's just the first pick rumble does do it for me when yeah. you leave up so many power picks like the Karma and Yumi mm -hmm. and you don't grab any of them. And Lux is strong, but 
feels like it's well, here below. At least Clutch has an identity, right? So the identity is the most difficult compositions to execute for the most part, which should, should that be the identity of Let's a team see. that is tied for seventh? They are zeroing in on something, and if okay. it's a matter of refining it and needing the practice, I mean, they've had a lot of practice. It's still not there, but it's looking better. The Zed got killed this time around versus the last time that it was Zed, so. Listen, I, no matter how much we say, they're yeah. still sticking you're not to gonna it. Make, you're not going to make this clutch gaming comp sound good to me. But what you have made clear to me is the difficulty of execution for this composition, which, again, gets highlighted to an extreme against a team that doesn't make as many mistakes as your average team would. We, draw, we jump right into top lane dive from Clutch Gaming. Broken Blade, I want you to help me break this one down because I think there was opportunity for this to turn out better. Uh, yeah, this, this was really unclear to me what was happening in the game because Rumble was going to the Herald, warding it while Lyra was in the bush waiting for Karma to be there. But when Karma faced the, the bush, uh, Rumble was not ready to punish that. And I think that was a very, very big mistake in the game, which caused a lot of problems later on because they're using a lot of sums and resources for the top lane, for the top lane dive, but it was a one for one trade and it was just very, very unsync by... I think it was forced because when we were watching that, you were saying they can't dive her, she's got stopwatch, and beyond that, she's got the magic resistance from the chalice. So it's very true that they didn't want to go for the gank and she just faces like, oh, I might as well try to kill her, I guess, even though we're not in position. And even if you knock her down, it's the least important member of the team. It's Karma Top. It's not the composition at all. Yeah, which is, and, and the fact that that play took place at 10 minutes, again, to me, speaks to the desperation that Clutch was already feeling. Right? This idea that they needed a lead, they needed a gold advantage at that point in the game to feel comfortable moving into more of the team fight phases. Let's jump ahead just four minutes to around the Rift Herald, where Team Liquid has been positioned for maybe two, three minutes now at this point. Clutch looking for the right kind of fight and still struggling to find it. I mean, this is why they wanted that gold lead, is how much harder it is for them to find kills. You have the Karma speed up, the Sivir speed up, the heals, the shields, and so even though Smithy kind of gets cut off from retreating from the Rumble Equalizer and isolated out, the Yumi on top of him buying space with the ultimate. He's still getting CC'd up, but finally some last minute heals come in as well. He just turns around, grabs Lyra and for a kill. So unnecessary for him to go in. You just got the Rift Herald. You could have just eat out. Yeah, I mean, they, they thought they could get kills because it's 300 HP, no stopwatch you know, Skarner, and you think you can get that kill, but there's just too much utility on Team Liquid's side. Broken Blade, what... This is a huge and maybe impossible question to answer, but where in this game would you... Like, what, what if you had to pick one thing to have done entirely differently for Clutch here? given these drafts and pick any point in the game like what 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 would have been something you would have tried or you would have called for trying um i think clutch has to snowball the game in order to win because they clearly got all drafted i have to say um i would go a lot into million 2v2s okay. because that is their uh pick into corky their last pick into corky and if that pick does not snowball they will not win the game because the only Identity in the in this comp was team fighting, but they still got they, they TL still had a better team fight because I mean, how can you team fight against Karma, Sivir, Yumi? It's just too hard, and if they can't snowball, it's just very hard to win at that point. So an idea that we were talking about was your jungler can go into the mid lane and just burn his own flash to force a gank. It's not going to yield a kill. But what you do is you trade flash. So now Jensen loses flash against the Monte. Now he has to be stuck in the lane against an assassin that has ignite and his own flash. So the kill threat is a lot.